What's up, duelists? It's your boy, Brennan, a.k.a. Drip, back with another video. And today's video, we're going to talk Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it's tis the season. And I'm not talking about the season and the fact that I'm wearing my kid's Santa Claus hat, or the fact that it's Christmas time, or other holidays. I'm talking bandless season. The good season. Well, not to say the other seasons aren't good, but... We love bandless season because it's the time of year or the time of Yu-Gi-Oh season where they mix things up and things get hit. Some things get better, some things get worse. But we all, as duelists, for the most part, love the January one. Myself, personally, I feel like that's the one where they mainly like to clean house. Uh, just since I've been back in a competitive scene for the past like five years, that's normally the one where they do so. Uh, but this list, I think, is going to be a lot different. Uh, mainly because I feel like they're just going to slap some things on the wrist and stir the uh, format up because to be honest my personal opinion that this, this format is actually probably well just Yu-Gi-Oh in general not just this format is the healthiest that it's been in a long time outside of a couple of cards so I don't think that they're going to destroy a lot of decks I think they're going to slap some decks on the wrist Hurt the consistency and get rid of some generic stuff, mainly because they have the YCS is coming around and Yu-Gi-Oh is trying to get back in the IRL play, and people need to play with their physical cards. So this talk and discussion is not my prediction list. It's what I can see them hitting, along with some biased and some wish list. So it's mainly a Yu-Gi-Oh discussion, not a not to get confused with. A prediction uh, like a set in stone prediction now some of these cards getting could be getting hit yes I can 110% see some of these cards getting hit could some of these cards that I mentioned come off the list 100% so don't get it confused with that and this is just my personal opinion what I would like to see getting hit and basically that's basically what we're all it is so basically we're gonna start out with the band section I only have three cards on the band section. I know that might be different from what other people have, but the first card I have on the band section is the Samorg Link. This card has got to go because it promotes way too much and it adds too much consistency as well as like just being overbearing with what it can do. The tutor out, the barrier statue, bring out anything that it needs from the deck. It, there's no reason if like the the card is literally summon sword on steroids for the most part for winning beasts it can't makes it to where they can't be targeted or anything like that so like this card has got to go because we can't necessarily hit bird up directly because the deck is too new it still has new support coming out so it'd be a bad business decision so I think that is the problematic card more so than um, the Barrier Statue. After talking with some of my friends, I, I, at first I said just ban Barrier Statue straight out. Uh, but they, they, they convinced me that it was the Link Monster, and which I, I knew the Link Monster was a problem, but I didn't know which one was more of the problem. But uh, they convinced me, and I 100% agree, that the Link Monster is the issue with the deck. Uh, the, the core of the deck, that is. But... Moving on to the next card. Uh, the next card is going to be uh, Verte. Uh, this card has got to go. If you go back and look at it, uh, the past two years, normally, um, well, last year, this year will be the second year if it happens again. Last year, and I think another October set to the year before, I could be wrong, um, two cards usually out of the October sets or the set before October or set after October gets hit on the January list. Mainly because around that time is mainly when they reprint the cards that are really big and not everybody has access to, so they have access to them before they end up getting hit. On top of that, Verte just literally, you want to talk about promoting um, bad Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, Anaconda is literally the epitome of that. Outside of Dragoon and um, ID, uh, um, DPE, not IDP, DPE. This this card is so like it's so generic. As long as it just has fusion in the name, on top of that, 
with the Albaz structure decks coming out with branded fusion, that means the deck, any deck will basically be able just to spam in branded fusion in a small um, Albaz package and basically make anything they want. So it is time for this card to go. It got its reprint in October in the gold set. So it is time for this card to just say his prayers and just go somewhere. Not only that, this card also, with this card getting hit, it also hits a lot of different decks uh, that are like higher tier, or yes, it, it does hit the rogue decks too. It hits, um, it can hit Invoke Shadows, even though that that is my deck. Um, but I feel like it will hit that deck too, along with the, um, any deck that mainly makes DPE and, uh, God, I can't think of the deck right now. The Ritual deck. It forces them to rely on their actual uh, Drytron. There we go. It forces Drytron to actually rely on their own cards instead of just crutching out a Dragoon just to sit on. Um, so it, it indirectly takes care of that problem too. It takes care of a lot of problems. Along with that card being gone, it forces other decks who actually want to main deck those cards that are not really in their archetypes, such as DPE or Dragoon or other situations like that. They have to run the bricks and they have to draw the bricks, as in the um, fusion materials and the uh, fusion spells themselves. So hitting that card takes care of that situation too. And then the third card on this list is literally a no-brainer. I forgot about it, no, I'm not going to lie, until my friends told me about it again. And that is literally Harpy's Featherstorm. I don't know why I forgot about this card. I don't know why when originally when I had this list I didn't give it, uh, put it on here. It, it just slipped my mind literally. But this card has literally got to go. The, um, this card literally uh, promotes just not playing. There's no reason why th this card should be legal and VFD be banned when they're literally the same basically and directly. So people can just shotgun it and, and it's potentially worse because even back in the day with VFD, you could hit it with uh, a hand trap and could potentially stop it. But it, it, this card is worse. So it's a trap card, they could just shotgun it and it, it GG's. It, they just basically pass the turn back to them because you can't really do nothing. And then, uh, so that's not really much information and I need to be set on that. It's just needs to go along with this next card. This next card is just, it's it's gotta go. And that's Imperial Order. Imperial Order should have never been off the list. It, it just needs to go in there and stay forever. This card literally says you can't play the game. Uh, so why, why is it legal? There's no reason for it. Um, it just wins games by just activating it. That's, that's not, that's not good Yu-Gi-Oh. So, IO doesn't really need much explaining. Um, so it's actually four on my list. I apologize. I thought there was three, but it's actually four. Four on my ban list. Uh, so that's, and moving on to the limited list now. Um, the limited list is actually a lot longer than my ban list, mainly because I have stuff, uh, only like one card going on the list is limited that's currently playing right now. And the rest of them are coming off of the list to one. And it's a buy. A lot of it is biased. Most of it is biased, but I have reasoning and explanations behind it. Hence, why this is a wish list video and stuff I can see coming off the list. But the first one that I got going on the list, which is the card that we're as currently legal now at three, that I can see going to one uh, because it ha it adds so much consistency to um, basically any any deck that can actually play it because it's literally the rota of the deck basically. And it hurts birds a little bit, and that is fractal. Um, I know at the time of saying this, I just got my fractals, and I'm currently making a deck profile with uh, with them. But this card, I feel, is the out of the Trivergate like engine itself, because it's basically all it is now is an engine, or even in the pure deck, just feels like an engine to me. The main problem is fractal. Now, if you want to break it down between Fractal, Omen, and Revolt, <sighs> Omen kind of outweighs the situation a little bit, but I still think Fractal is the main issue because you don't want to crucify and uh, neuter this deck. You want to still make it playable, and I think the deck could still be playable with one Fractal and three, like Omen and three uh, Revolt, because 
if you put Revolt to 1, the deck really doesn't have any grind game whatsoever. As where if you still have one Fractal, the deck itself can still grind for the most part as long as they still have the 3 Revolt. Because basically once you start getting your stuff flowing from the graveyard, you can just keep basically making the same board, making the same board, but you still only get that one search off Fractal. Basically search, even though you're dumping. You still get what I'm saying. So, I feel like if they hit Fractal to 1, the deck can still, like, contend at the same, like, the high, uh, the high level that it's at right now. But also indirectly smacking another consistency smack to Bird Up without actually hurting the deck itself. Because even if the Samorg Link is gone and Fractal is put to 1, if they still want to run the Tri-Brigade engine, which I don't feel like they would actually opt to do that, but... I don't play bird up, so I don't know. It would it would slow the deck's consistency down a little bit. And I feel like that's what the deck needs because that deck is so consistent. Literally, sometimes I feel like the only thing that can stop that deck is literally drool, nothing else. That's just my opinion. I don't know, but then again, like I said, I don't play the deck. I don't I I just know when I play against that deck, it's business. Um, and then moving on to the rest of the limber list, this is from here on out is where it starts getting kind of biased. The farther down we go for the most part, um, and I'll, I'll explain more in detail with that. But the first one I think uh, that's coming, can come off the list to one would be, um, Lunar Light Tiger. I know that might sound absurd, but I think that card has been on the list long enough. Now that we don't have access to as a thought. And car, degenerate cards like that, and VFD, and et cetera, et cetera. Even though we never really made VFD, the Kaliuga play that the deck did back then, you have to think that that that, that combo was mainly like through like Azathoth and stuff like that. But that combo itself, the other part of that combo, is actually still legal to this day through Raid Raptors. So if Raid and they can get to it more consistently too. So if Raid Raptors has that combo and it's not performing or doing anything, why can't Luna Light players have their Tiger back in order to find some other kind of uh, spice or even be able to contend for that matter? Um, so that that's my outlook on that. Even with Tiger being at one, I don't, I still don't think Luna Lights would do really anything because the As a Thought stuff's gone and you can't really do that part of the combo anymore. So I think Lunar Light Tiger to one will be okay. Um, moving on uh, to the next one. The next one's not really biased. I just, I don't understand how this card hasn't come off the list yet. Definitely uh, considering um, Dragon Link is for the most part kind of nerfed at the moment, they can still contend. And I'm not denying the fact that the deck is still really powerful and really good. It's just now that Argapane's been gone for a while and then LP got hit on the last list, why this card hasn't come back, and that is um, Ib the World Chalice Just a Seer. We basically have that card, but better, and a Link 2, so that, there's no reason for that card to even be on uh, the ban list. It can just uh, come off and go to 1. Go to 1, go to 3, it don't really matter. Uh, I just put it on here, go to one, just in case if there is some other kind of deck that can end up breaking it because there always is something that can break anything in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is now. But with the World Legacy card, like it was basically back in the day, what you would do is you would make, you would sync that, like use a Draco Net, bring out Galaxy Serpent, sync into that, search um, World Legacy Guard Dragon, and then you're just golden with your Guard Dragon combos. So um, I think with that, uh, with basically the Dragon Link stuff being nerfed, it's okay to come back. If anything, it might boost that deck a little bit. Even though I know Dragon Link as a whole is a very touchy, touchy, filly situation, considering how long that deck literally ruled the uh, meta for a while, a couple formats. So I, f I understand that on that regard, but I feel like if um, that card come back, it, there's just no reason with the main, a lot the big. Um, powerful dragon link cards being uh, gone and then this next one i know a lot of people are going to meme on it and uh it's just mainly because like i said i outside of my wish list 
I think Konami is going to stir up the format because there's not much that really needs to be changed. I said that again, but this one's not really a biased uh, opinion. I just think I would like to see what it could do. Do I think it could do a lot of anything? No. Do uh, I think it could just work its way in and out every once in a while? It's just doing something throughout the format. Yes, I do. That's why I think I would like it to come back. And uh, that is uh, Electromite. Um, I know. I know. Electromite coming back to one would be uh, 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 make Triff happy, and we all want Triff happy because when Triff's happy, it's it, it's funny. It's it's nice to see him happy. But either way, outside of that, it also uh, with I was shocked it didn't come out with uh, when the Heavy Metal Foes got their new support and all that. It'll be nice to see if that deck could really do anything. I don't know nothing about the deck, so I don't know if that card would really lift them up to where it could contend. I'm sure it could because Electromite is busted. Um, but along with helping Pendulums as well, obviously uh, Triff has been having great success with Pendulums and, and in the tournaments that he's been playing in. But outside of just Pendulums himself, between Pendulums, any version of Pendulums, it would be nice to see their basically their best support card that my opinion i think they've had uh, they have had at least top five it, it needs to come back and help them out a little bit because i feel like it, I, every other summoning mechanic is like has gotten support really except for pendulums and i know pendulums is a very touchy touchy philly situation too but it, without indirectly giving them new support you could give them their old support back to where they can at least play and contend at a higher level than they really are now so Definitely considering the new Master Rule, like, well, not even new, it's been out for almost two years now. Um, the, they still technically are playing a Master Rule behind because they don't get the full benefit like the rest of the summoning mechanics do. So it'll be nice to see if they can really do anything along with uh, being able to reset their scales because they don't really have that much off the top of my head that I can think of that helps them to actually reset their scales. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and then the next one on the list, this next one really is biased. Um, and usually the Yu-Gi-Oh! community is split 50-50 on this, and it might be split different ratio than that, but I was just giving an analogy. Uh, and that is that is my, my dude, Thunder King, uh, Thunder King, yeah, literally Thunder King, Thunder Dragon Colossus. I really think it's time for my man to come off the ban list. He, he's, he served his two years basically in prison bro bring him back a lot of people are asking for him he needs to come back uh titan's been holding the fort down like a big brother should but it's time for a little brother to come in and give a boost to that deck on outside all jokes aside i think if colossus came back He's not, that deck, that stuff's not really that splashable in anything anymore outside. I, I'm sure you can say Prank Kids could do it. Prank Kids could make Colossus, but um, and I know that's kind of saying, uh, kind of like on ice, thin ice, because they are going to basically become really powerful with the Brave Token stuff, and they can have all that plus Colossus. Uh, but I'm mainly looking at it for actually pure Thunder Dragon itself. Because I think, if my personal opinion, if you give Thunder Dragon players such as myself and other everyone else their Thunder Dragon Colossus back, then I really think it could potentially be a rogue contender. Because the deck can main deck, um, is real, the deck is very consistent. The deck can main deck Dimension Shifter, and we've already seen how that goes with a deck that can main deck Dimension Shifter like Flunder. Um, it immediately, it immediately just blows out a lot of the uh, meta and format. So I really think Colossus coming back would be a uh, immediate um, rogue contender slash tier two deck, if not better, depending on what spice you could potentially mix it with. I'm just talking about pure as a whole, and it would also indirectly slow down the other top tier decks too, just because of Colossus being a floodgate. Yes, you can make the argument that the fact that he uh, a floodgate that can protect itself. Yeah, that is really kind of busted. I understand that, but there is a lot of lot more cards now that we, we they that you you didn't have back then. That is a non-target, non-destruction send, like Zeus and um, I can't really remember that spell card. Uh, those two off the top of my head, 
Uh, there's another spell card that just literally sends it. Um, but either way, that, that plus Dark Ruler, uh, Forbidden Droplets, stuff like that can easily he help play against one single Colossus. So, but I do think if he came back, it really would um, mess up the meta a little bit. But moving on, another biased uh, um, opinion I'm honestly going to say, but there is reason behind it. If it were to come back, I feel like it would not be as oppressive as it used to be. It wouldn't be really probably splashed and everything like it used to be depending on how things played out. If it was, it's mainly because people missed it and really wanted to play the engine again. And that is Harp to one. Uh, Orcus it has been flowing like a roller coaster here in the past few weeks, up and down, in and out of um, tournaments and doing relatively nice. So I think if they had Harp, it would just be that much nicer because they would, I feel like they could have more of a contention because they would get that additional plus one and I feel like the deck as a whole wouldn't be, I think it would be more of a pure deck, whether you're playing the pure Orcus or you're playing like a Trap Orcus or you're playing like uh, the Mech Knight Orcus, which is my personal favorite. If you're playing those versions, I feel like that's basically all it's going to be. It's not going to be how it was back in the day where it was, they were literally just throwing anything in Orcus because of Nightmare Mermaid and, uh, uh, shenanigans like that so Orcus was literally everywhere it, it just absorbed the entire format basically um, so I feel like Harp to One would be okay because it would give another deck to be able to be like played granted Orcus is very much playable now it can very it can very, it contend just like almost every other deck can it's just a little bit of a boost it would be nice to see what uh what, uh, what people could do with it with just one Harp and I feel like it wouldn't really do that much of anything, honestly. Um, so, but moving on to the next one, guys. This next one is, eh, it's, it just depends how things go. But this one is definitely a biased opinion. Uh, just like Colossus is and Harp. Um, which also is the last one on the limited list. And is coming off the list. With that card being um, number 95, Dark Matter. Uh, I feel like that card can come back to one and be okay. Definitely considering Eclipse Wyvern and all the other Dragon Rulers are basically banned, so you no one would have to worry about that. Uh, those shenanigans, along with even if you're going to do the other side of the page with the um, extra deck lock, that that requires setup. With that being if with that being said though. With that extra deck lock requiring setup, not very many decks are also running rank eights right now. Also, people are literally extra deck locking people for free with uh, DPE and Scythe with Dagda, which is stupid consistent. And Phantom Knights could even double Scythe lock in one turn. So there's no reason for that to basically be legal or against the number 95. Um, the number 95 coming back and it is i don't know it it makes me kind of frustrated sometimes that all these other cards that are more powerful are still i mean granted it's it's really relatively new i get that but there's no reason that these cards should be still banned i feel like number 95 should have came off the list a long time ago um but that's just me i guess it's just touchy touchy feely Definitely was Dragon Link back in a couple formats ago. I, I, I guess I can understand that it, why it never came back. But I think it's time. Uh, myself as a Galaxy House player and other Galaxy House players or Blue House players or maybe even um, Manju since they run rank 8s. Even though if you know me, you know I can't stand that deck. <clears throat> even Manju players can uh, utilize that card and it gives a boost. So basically if you haven't caught the rotation yet... I'm basically in where boosting other decks, bringing stuff off the list, and uh, just make, basically making the format more well-rounded than it already is, which is kind of crazy because, like I said, we're already in a really healthy format, healthy state in Yu-Gi-Oh! <clears throat> for the most part. So all is just better. It's always better to add to it. So um, Honorable mentions to going to one would be... Um, 
uh, the Dragon Ruler Blaster, the fire one. Uh, he he he's an honorable mention that could potentially uh, would it would be eh, if it went to one, but I feel like if we got Dark Matter back, it would just maybe I don't know to bring uh, him back. But the other ones, uh, Title uh, and Redox, those those guys need to stay banned, um, mainly uh, because uh, Emancipators is still a thing, and I know they would end up finding a way to just uh, abuse Redox. And water is actually catching like head of steam. It's it's catching steam. It's it's gaining steam, and that uh, whether it be in the sharks, marincess, or just water as a general, because I've seen a lot of good decks that are water is just basically running anything water. So title, uh, uh, my opinion, needs to stay banned for that very reason. But blaster is just eh, if it came off it. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know much of anything what it would do, but it's still I, since I said dark matter, I left it off of here just for that reason. Uh, but that's actually it for the limited section, uh, which I feel like all of that is actually possible that it could all end up happening. Will it? Will it happen? Probably not. But it's like I said, a wish list, and uh, it's nothing like too regret, like too far fetched is the word that I was looking for. But moving on to the unlimited section, I'm not doing a semi-limited because semi-limited is basically kind of dumb. Uh, because if you think about it, if you're if semi-limited stuff, you're basically running three anyways. So you might as well put it the unlimited. <clears throat> I don't know why they even have a semi-limited list, but it's whatever. I'm not going to argue because sometimes cards go to two and you want it at three, so it's better to have it at two than three. So that's just me. So I see both sides of the book. But uh, starting off with the unlimited section, it's very small, short, simple, and sweet. The first card I have on here is Hero Lives. Heroes aren't really doing much of anything. You find it bouncing around in and out now that DPE is a card. And they have a one card combo basically to Dark Law, Fusion Destiny, and stuff like that. <clears throat> but I feel like uh, Hero Lives can come to a three. The card has a high price for indirectly uh, small, uh, like a kind of a, a eh, small like reward. So do I think heroes would even play three? No. Do I think they'd play two? Some lists. I still think even if it came to three, a lot of hero players with their deck's consistency, they would still only run one because heroes already have a high ceiling for consistency. So I still think uh, they'll probably end up playing two. Just saying that they could end up seeing it or have more of a grind game because as a hero hero player your number one issue outside of nibiru is you don't really have a grind game you really don't so if anything this that it would end up promoting um promoting a grind game a little bit more for you so i feel like that's what kind of uh, what kind of what hero players need and it would be nice to see because one of my best friends is a hero player so if anything uh, you can call it biased if you want to but it's just my since i do play with him a lot and i have played heroes a small amount myself i i know what kind of what the deck needs so and it's mainly consistency because they just throw all their pieces on board and say break it and or you lose basically so they uh, that that i feel like hero lives coming at three would just add a little bit more consistency along with a little bit of a grind game with the cost of life points but Pegasus did say you got to spend life points to take life points. So listen to him. All right, moving on to the next one. And the next one on my unlimited list, literally, it, it's been, it came to two. This previous list hasn't really done Jack Diddley squat, so going to three is not going to change anything. And that is Danger Nessie. As a Danger Thunder player back in the day, I can vouch that this car back then was actually very potent and uh, very strong. Being able to run three of the big, uh, the big three, is what I call them, and that being Nessie, uh, Jack Jack, and Such, because you always got a body with those six. You basically have nine upstart goblins and uh, board presence. It was guaranteed. So Nessie can come to three. Uh, it at two hasn't really done anything. I think Yu-Gi-Oh is beyond that point where it was at back in the 2018 format and 2019. So I feel like it coming to three wouldn't really change much of anything. It'll give uh, slower decks more of a boost and level seven decks more of a boost, rank sevens rather. 
So I feel like it coming to three will be okay because it hasn't really done Jack Daly squat, like I said, at two. Now, as for if you're waiting on me to say Jack, Jack, or Such, come to two or three, I've already passed the, I'm not even doing a semi but come to three, no, it's not happening. Why? I'll tell you why. And it's not the fact for anything that I mentioned before. It's the fact that, if anything, Phantom Knights does not need any more consistency that that deck already has. Um, more level threes for uh, the uh, abuse at their expense? No. The, uh, as long as Phantom Knights is as strong as it is, or uh, basically, I think it would have Phantom Knights would have to lose Torn Scales to one for them for them to even be willing to bring back uh, Suture or Jack Jack. Um, not just the fact for just that deck as a whole. It's just any true like dark deck or deck that wants to get their stuff in the graveyard that can abuse dangers. As long as a deck like that is floating in the format, I do not see those those two coming back. Mainly because yes, you can argue Nessie is the rota, but indirectly, Such and Jack are the better two because you definitely get a board pers presence off of uh, Such and you get a summon off of Jack. So, and on top of that, they're both level threes. And but so with that scene being said, there's no way and hell that they're going to come back with a deck like phantom knights existing in the format right now so but i do have nessie coming to three because nessie is um it's time she it, she served her time so she can come to three and just help out all the smaller decks or whatever deck wants to use her um uh, moving on to the last one i don't really i'm not going to really go in much detail with this one I just know, I've read the card eh, a little bit because I've looked into, it's uh, kind of like, a, I guess you could say it's pure form of it and with being odd eyes and stuff. But the last card coming to three is uh, Perform Pile Skullbat Joker. Um, that card has been at two, this previous list. It hasn't really done nothing, so I can honestly see this coming to three. I'll be shocked if it doesn't come to three because normally whenever they Konami puts anything to two, if it doesn't do nothing like, absurd they always bring the three to the next list so i wouldn't be surprised uh but mainly because like i said before pendulums need a little lift up give me up so i think if they get this though they could find some the just pendulum decks as a unit could find a way to like do some kind of cool shenanigans with it and i have the like highest respect for not just like true i'm just talking about any pendulum player because a lot of that crap is big brain and it's it's tough. So it's always it's always nice watching that deck play. Um, no matter what form or what version it is. Uh, another honorable mention, I guess you could say, to go to three. I was going to put one here, but I didn't because if this list, like anything remotely close to this list, like falls it into play, it would uh, it would be I think too much. At, at once to uh, see how it would work out, and that would be um, Endymion Servant. Uh, she, uh, Servant of Endymion, rather, sorry. She, uh, going from one to three, I think that hit was kind of unnecessary when they even put her to one. The deck really wasn't doing much of anything. Um, I guess they were afraid of what the deck could do. I don't know. I don't know what was going through there when he did that. Because I'm, if I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure they hit her and Electromite on the same list. And it's like, at the time, Pendulums wasn't even really doing anything. So what's what, what was this hit for? It was kind of, kind of, eh, meh. But regardless, uh, honorable mention, her come to three. But I didn't put her on there because I gave them Joker back to three. And I gave them Electromite to one. So would I be surprised if she went to three? No. Do I think she's going to go to three? Not yet. I really don't think so. If she does go to three, then they're not going to get, uh, they won't get Electromite, which I'll be, I don't think they're going to get Electromite anyways. I just would like to see it. But then again, that was it for my unlimited list. My personal opinion, I looked over the ban list and a lot of the stuff that was on there that I, that I have lived and played through, which I haven't played competitive, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh that long. I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! since 2002, but I didn't play... For a little backstory fun fact, i played Yu-Gi-Oh! since 2002. I stopped playing in 2009, but I was a casual player all the way through because mainly I was a kid. Um, 
And then I picked the uh, hobby back up in early 2017 and been playing competitive like that ever since. So basically, the stuff that I put on this list was the stuff that I played through and I have seen come in and out of the format. So I've, ex I've experienced those formats is the reason why I made this list the way it is. And I feel like this stuff can come off the list or go back on the list, whatever the case may be. Because that's just, I think some got power crept or the games move forward and no one's going to really want to look at them. But with that being said, guys, I hope you all liked this video. It's my first real like video like this. So I hope you all did enjoy it. And if I left anything out or stuff from older formats that, uh, that were in between my gap from 2009 to 2017 that you think can come off the list or cards that can go on the list that's on there now, let me know in the comments section below. But again, you all have y'all hit that like button if you haven't already. Check out the description for the Discord and PayPal and everything else if you want to help support the channel any further. But you all have a wonderful day, night, morning, evening, whenever you're watching this video. I hope you all are having an awesome day and staying safe out there in the age of COVID. And good doing, my guys. Peace.